everyone, I'm Faye from Warwickshire Wildlife Trust and I'm here at the Bobbin Hall Wood and Meadow Nature Reserve because today I'd really love to talk to you about a fascinating creature, bats. Now, sadly, all of our family bat walks were cancelled this year. So I'm here to encourage you to go out into your garden, your local nature reserve, or come here to Bubbin Hall Wood with your family for an early evening walk in the next few weeks to see the bat activity going on around you. It's the perfect time before they head into hibernation for the winter. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about bats now so you have an idea of what you're looking for. So bats are mammals like us so they're warm-blooded they're covered in fur and they feed their young with milk now unlike us they are a flying mammal in fact they are the only flying mammal and they come from an order of species called chiroptera which basically translates to hand wing as you can see there's the elbow here the forearm the little thumb that sticks up and really long elongated fingers in which the skin has formed in between. So we have 5,500 different types of mammals on earth and 1,100 of those are bats, which means that bats make up a fifth of all mammals on earth, which is a pretty incredible number. In the UK alone, we have 18 different species of bats and they actually became a protected species in 1981. Now, contrary to belief, bats will not cause damage to your home. In fact, this is the Joanina Library in Portugal. This is a unique library because it has its own bat colony as a form of defence against book-eating insects. Now, bats are all different sizes and colours. However, bats in the UK are all fairly small in size. I want to talk a little bit about the common pipistrelle, which is the bat that we are most likely to see at Bubbanol or in your gardens. Now the common pipistrelle is a really small bat. He's about half the length of my thumb. He weighs more than a one pence piece, but less than a two pence piece. So next on the list of common bats that we're likely to see whilst out and about is the soprano pipistrelle. Now, as the name suggests, they are very similar to the common pipistrelle, which we've just seen. However, there are some slight differences between the two species. In fact, they were only separated in taxonomy in 1999, when scientists realized that soprano pipistrelles echolocate at a slightly different frequency, and they have slightly different food and habitat to the common pips. So next on the list is our noctual bat. So the noctual bat is actually the UK's largest bat. They tend to roost in holes in trees as opposed to buildings, and they're often seen flying high above the canopy in search of their insect prey. So the next bat I'd like to show you is the Dorbenton's bat, or sometimes referred to as the water bat. Now these bats can be identified by their size. So they're a small to medium sized bat. They've got brownish fur and a greyish tummy with a pink face. Now they have the term water bat because they like to forage for their food close to the water. So they often roost in trees, um, in bridges, under tunnels, in canals, and they will take insects, midges, caddisfly, mayflies off the surface of the water. In fact, they can even use their feet and sometimes their tails to help forage whilst they're feeding. Now, this is the brown long-eared bat. Now, it certainly lives up to its name. Its long ears are almost the same length as its body. It's a medium-sized bat and can be seen feeding around hedgerows and has a soft, slow, fluttery flight, which can help to identify it. So the last bat I would like to show you is the Natteras bat, which is a widespread but scarce species across the UK. It likes to feed down low amongst the trees and will take prey directly from the foliage itself. As you can see, it's fairly light in colour with a light brown fur and they like to roost in old buildings, including churches and castles, but rarely in houses. So I hope that helps to give you an idea of just some of the bat species that we have here in the UK. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about the bat life cycle. 
So bats form colonies over the winter and they hibernate. Come the spring and summer, they have a maternity roost and they give birth to just one baby. Now the common pipistrelle babies can weigh up to 25% of the mass of the mother, which is the equivalent of giving birth to a two stone baby. Now the babies grow up very quickly. They leave the nest at about four weeks old in which they can fly and feed for themselves. In the autumn, they form harems, they swarm and they mate and the cycle starts again. Now bats can live up to 30 years old, but are endangered due to their slow breeding rate. So where do bats live? Well, bats like to live in roosts. They love cool, damp places. They sleep upside down or they crawl into all sorts of crooks and crannies. They've been found roosting in barns, sheds, caves, trees and under buildings. Bats will tend to return to the same colony and most colonies in the UK are around average 50 bats. So what do bats eat? Well, all British bats eat insects. Bats need to eat about a third of their body weight every day. In fact, a common pipistrelle needs to eat about 3,000 insects every night. So when and where can you see bats? So bats are nocturnal, which means that they come out at night time. So early evening, dusk is the best time of day to see bats. You may be lucky enough to have bats feeding in your garden, but if not, head to your local nature reserve or somewhere like Bub and Hall Wood to come and see bats in action. Now, once here, keep an eye out over water, look up in the tree canopy and also along hedgerows because they're all the kinds of places that different species of bat like to feed. So how do bats actually find their food in the dark? Well, their eyesight is about as good as ours, but they use something called echolocation. Now, echolocation works when the bat shouts through a gap in their front teeth at around 120 decibels. The sound travels out, hits the prey, and then is reflected back to them. Now those amazing ears that they've got pick up the sound and they know exactly where that prey is. We've actually copied bats use of echolocation um, to help airplanes fly at night. Now we can't hear bats talking to each other, we have to use something called a bat detector. And what a bat detector does is it turns the inaudible sound into something that we can hear. So this is a bat detector and what it can help us to do is determine the species of bat depending on the frequency that we pick up. Different bats call at different frequencies. For example, a common pipistrelle will call at 45 kilohertz, whereas a soprano pipistrelle will call at 55 kilohertz. A noctule might call at 25 kilohertz. So bat detectors come with a little cheat sheet so depending on the frequency that you pick up, you should be able to determine the species of bat that you're seeing. So this dial on the side of the bat detector turns it on and affects the volume. And the main dial sets the frequency. So if I set it to 45, I'll tend to walk with it on 45 because that's the bat that I'm most likely to pick up, our common pipistrelles. So the flight can also help to determine what bat species you're seeing. Brown long-eared bats can be found feeding around vegetation. Common pipistrelles have a twisty, turny, erratic flight. Dorbenton bats can be found over water. And noctual bats often have a high, straight flight along the tree canopy. So I hope that you've enjoyed our short introduction to bats and I've encouraged you to either sit in your garden or come along to Bubba Nall Wood and maybe see what bats you can find in the next couple of weeks before they head into hibernation over the winter. If you want to help bats in your own garden, there's lots of things that you can do. You can have at least one tree or shrub, plant night scented flowers, which will attract insects, as will garden lights, you can install a bat box. And lastly, just tell your friends how cool bats are. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. Thanks to our funders, the National Lottery Heritage Fund for making it possible. And do tell us if you get out there on a bat walk um, in the next few weeks. Thanks, bye.